The compass. It is the instrument that we most associate with explorers. Today, we are exploring the compass, its origins, the changes it went through, and the changes it saw the world go through. The compass is believed to have first been invented in China. The Chinese made use of the lodestone. It is a special form of mineral magnetite that as a natural magnet aligns itself with the Earth's magnetic field. With this natural magnet, the Chinese created the world's first dry compass. This was around the 4th century BC. Interestingly, the first use of the world's first compass was for feng shui or geomancy. It was only later during the Song dynasty in the 11th century that trading ships started using the compass to navigate the seas. This allowed them to sail all the way to Saudi Arabia without getting lost. With the Souk Road, technology of the compass travelled from China to the Muslim world and Europe. While the Arabs used the compass primarily for non-navigational purposes, the Europeans used it primarily for navigational purposes. The Arab world used the compass for things like astronomy and for religious purposes. In astronomy, the Arabs used the compass to increase the accuracy in locating and predicting the position of the sun, moon, planets and stars, determining the local time given latitudes and vice versa. In the 1300s, the Arab world used the dry compass as a Qibla indicator, that is, to find a direction to Mecca in order to know where to pray towards during their morning and evening prayers. In Europe, the compass found other applications. It was used primarily for navigational purposes, and this led to increased trade, new trade routes, more effective map charting, and it also helped European powers colonize other nations. Before the compass, there could be no sea travel between October and April. This was because during the Mediterranean winter, the skies were not clear enough for navigation by the stars. But with the compass, they were able to trade even during winter, and even if they strayed far from visual landmarks, they could get back on track. This made a huge difference to profitability. With the compass, commercial voyages from the Mediterranean could sail into the English Channel. The compass also made traversing the Bay of Biscay safer and easier. Trade traffic between the Mediterranean and Northern Europe also increased due to the discovery of newer, safer or shorter routes. Overall, these new routes, safer seafaring and more frequent voyages benefited the world and brought more wealth. In the 13th century, seafarers started plotting portland charts based on compass directions and estimated distances. These charts for the Atlantic and Indian coastlines were extremely valuable for their trading ships. With the compass, the Europeans navigated the seas and projected their power to colonize other parts of the world. The largest of all empires, England, was so big that the sun never set on her land. She had colonies in India, New Zealand, parts of Africa, Southeast Asia, and the Middle East. The dry mariner's compass was invented in Europe around the 13th century. The bearing compass was first used around the 18th century. The first liquid mariner compass was patented in 1813, and the first gyro compass was invented in 1906. The dry mariner's compass had a freely pivoting needle enclosed in a box with a glass cover and a wind rose. It was invented in medieval Europe around the 1300s. However, the dry compass was large, clunky, and bulky. In addition, the dry compass was liable to wear and tear due to friction. The bearing compass was made easier to read compared to its predecessors by fitting a lubber line, prism, and lens into the compass. It was also steadily reduced in size and weight to increase portability, resulting in a model that could be carried and operated in just one hand. The liquid mariner's compass protects against excessive swing or wobble from ship movement, improving readability while reducing wear. Early liquid compasses were actually cumbersome, heavy, and subject to damage. Their main advantage was on board ships. The gyro compass overcame many of the drawbacks of its predecessors. It is a non-magnetic compass that finds true north. Hence, inaccuracies from acceleration and deceleration, magnetic waves, and metallic structures are greatly reduced. 
The gyroscope within a compass spins rapidly in order to exploit the rotation of the Earth, hence getting the true north. Next, we'll touch on the modern day uses of the compass. Soldiers today still use the prismatic or bearing compass for on foot navigation. This is because it does not require electricity to run and cannot be jammed by the enemy. Ever wondered what kind of compass is used in our mobile phones? Most mobile phones are usually fitted with a solid state compass due to its small size. We can also use the global positioning system, GPS in short, on our phones as a compass. The GPS tracks our change in position and determines the compass bearing by measuring cardinal points relative to the direction of movement, hence giving us the reading. The compass is also often used for long distance travel today. The compass helps the pilot in aircrafts to determine the direction of flight. It also remains the primary navigation instrument on seagoing vessels. Thank you so much for your attention. I hope you found this presentation informative and interesting.